Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a Raglan tea, and it's going to be a liquid dye tutorial. Start by smoothing out as many wrinkles as you can, and do you guys see that blue that's in the white? That came from the sleeves. So I put the shirt in its own little Tupperware container with fresh soda ash, and then I forgot about it for like a month. I found it underneath a pile of white things. And that's okay, it happens, but you only need to soak it for 20 to 30 minutes. Then I spun it out in my Panda Spin dryer and I took that soda ash solution and I put it inside my reverse dye bucket. You definitely don't wanna put soda ash that might have dye in it into your regular soda ash bucket. So I'm using a modified fork and the microwave splatter guard to create my spiral. So I give the fork two or three twists, and then with my opposite hand, I actually create the spiral. I go as far as I can using the splatter guard until I can't go any farther, and then I secure it with rubber bands. And I have lost that footage of me securing it, so you can go back and look at all of my spirals. I do them exactly the same. Next, I like to mark out my pattern using a washable marker, and since this has the blue sleeves, I wanna to try to keep the dye off of the sleeves, so I'm just going to make a small circle around the center of the spiral. And now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And I can tell you that all of this dye is extremely old. I do not even know when I mixed it. Probably easily two or three months ago. I do not like to mix liquid dye at all and I also don't like to waste dye so I just figured what the heck let's go for it and see what's going to happen now watch what happens as I open up my robin's egg blue it's under pressure and it went flying everywhere and ah this is when I want to give up and just stop the project altogether but I've invested too much time to quit so we got to just keep moving forward so I did not want the robin's egg blue right there, but it chose itself. The goal for this particular project is not to oversaturate. I only want to go about halfway down through the pleats because I want this to have a white back. Just like you would with a black back shirt, I'm doing a white back. What that does is it creates white lines in between your dye instead of black lines, right? So I check the back, it's looking pretty good. So I decide I'm just going to go over top of each of my color just to make sure that there's enough saturation before I set it off to go batch. So my circle has gotten much larger than I wanted it to be, but that's all right and the back looks pretty good. So now it's time to batch, and it's recommended that you batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. And I can tell you that this shirt batched for the full 48 hours, and I batched it outdoors in the summer sunshine. So that tote must have been at least 100 degrees. So now it's time for the rinse out, and you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And it's really important if you're trying to protect white that you get all of that soda ash out before you increase your water up too hot. The hot water is going to remove the unbonded dye and you don't want it to redeposit on top of your white if there's still soda ash in there. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. That's a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And the links are down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is, guys. I love this shirt. I think it turned out great. And I'd never liquid dye. Well, I shouldn't say never, but I hardly ever liquid dye. 
And so using old dye worked out in this situation. I think the shirt has great vibrancy. Would it be more vibrant if the dye was fresh? Yeah, probably. But I think I still have really good saturation and the colors look beautiful. So I'm not trying to push using old dye. All I'm trying to say is, I think it does last longer than two weeks. And I'm pretty sure the dye companies say two weeks because they want us to pour the dye out so we use more dye and buy more dye, right? So it is a little more pastel than if it was fresh, but I still think it looks great. So overall, I'm very pleased. What do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing!